Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in the previous episode we did a manned mission to the moon, brought, uh, brought our Kerbal back safely. In this episode, however, we have to work on our unmanned capabilities and in particular in replacing the satellites we currently have in orbit with more advanced versions. The TDRS satellites that I had in orbit, put in orbit earlier, were uh, first of all very rudimentary and uh, because we only had a certain number of parts and limited launch capabilities now I think we have better launch capabilities and better parts so we should fix them up and of course there's the issue that now I need to fix the consumption multiplier and the range and I want to make our new antennae fully capable under the under the standard range instead of under uh, a higher multiplier. So uh, on that note I think uh, we'll get started. Ah, I should note I have already changed the consumption multiplier to 1 and the range to 1 again so I've uh, so now all the numbers should be reading proper which will allow me to uh, the, the battery thing is flashing but uh, yeah so that I can see what the power situation really is and so now I have to decide on uh, first we need to have a core I, I, I've decided that we should launch them all at one go if possible but if we can stack them somehow and so the question is what would be best to use um, and I guess the one best to use would be the one with the lowest uh, energy requirement on its own and just looking at them, I think it's this probodobodyne QBE. So, this will be the last of the satellites and we'll stack them. And so I'll just end up copying them somehow. Uh, but we have to figure out what kind of antennae we want to use on these. It's got its own little range, but it's only 3 kilometers, so that'll be outstripped pretty darn quickly. Uh, this is the last one, so this at least will need a reflectron. I want to... These will be the TDRS satellites in close orbit, so I don't need to worry too much about giving them the high range that something like this would give. Uh, what I do need is uh, omni-range capabilities, and I think the best omni-range that we've got on all, any of these is with this Comtech antenna. So let's put one of those on the side. Let's see what it looks like extended. Okay. Really goes out there, doesn't it? Okay, so that's that antenna. So we're going to stack them. Let me just get the decoupler on right away so that I don't forget about that. And try and attach something to the top, which would be a mistake. So we're going to stack them like so and they're going to have their own little propulsion system so let's get a uh, service module tank because they have to boost themselves into a higher orbit once we reach orbit okay I guess a uh, reaction wheel is called for just to save from needing too much RCS fuel our thrusters have to be radially mounted for us to be able to stack these things. So perhaps these would be best. MMH N204. Four of them seems a little bit uh, indulgent. Maybe two of them will be enough. Let's see. Well, more than enough. Well, actually I haven't filled up with fuel yet. Now we put some electric charge in here. Let's say 1,890 since that's the spare. And then about 90 units. Okay. So 1,500 delta V seems plenty. Now we need to worry about what kind of power we can... Now it says drain 0.04. I hope that's right. But... Um, Let's add the reaction. No, it doesn't seem to change much, does it? Oh well. Okay. 
I don't know if that's simulating right. So let me add the decoupler at the bottom right now. Okay. Actually... It'd be better to have a conic tank at the bottom here. And I'll show you why. I want to fit a little... I don't want it to be so tall, you see. I'm not too sure about the asymmetry. We really need something on the other side of this particular antenna. Uh, let's see what kind of solar panels we can get onto here before deciding that, though. Whoa. Um, it's a bit big, isn't it? Okay, well, those are new. Uh, we haven't actually uh, shoved too much battery power into this tank. Let's actually have an external battery instead of putting battery power in the tank. So it can stand 17 hours in the dark, this says. That's good. Okay, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, we seem to be generating enough electricity. Uh, let me get one emergency panel on here. It's only got a range of 10,000 kilometers right now. And maybe I want something a little bit more substantial. I think there's a multiple antenna multiplier. Is that right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that works. But maybe having... Oh, no, I didn't want the whole thing to move. Having one on each side will be best. Possibly I do want some reaction control thrusters to get the... Because the orbital timing needs to be precise and these won't do a very good job of that. So what I need is a very small light thruster block. Half. Huh, I thought there was a one quarter, but half seems right, doesn't it? Oh no, wait, this doesn't let me do what I want to do. See, what I want to do is... Well, let me not tell you, let me just show you. These are gotta be big though. Micro... Oh, these can. Okay. They're really, really, really small though. But let's go with these. Okay, so what I want to do is, for the first time ever, configure these to MMH N204, which means they'll be running on the same fuel as these, these thrusters, so I don't have to duplicate the fuel that I need to carry. I don't need to carry a different one, and let me actually get those closer to center of mass instead of putting them arbitrarily. Okay, good enough. So those will help out with that, and they'll be configured to the right fuel. Uh, I don't know if I should... Uh, maybe I should just put them on the tank, just to eliminate any question of cross-feeding. Okay, we'll have to bring out the, these panels manually. I've got two of those. And I'm still looking for an antenna that I could put on to the other side that won't guzzle. Cumitron, with these, the Cumitron 16 probably isn't very useful anymore. The Cumitron 32, same way. I mean, 4,000 kilometers compared to 10,000. And yeah, uh, the two numbers are actually for unextended and extended. So this one actually gives a 1,000 kilometer range even when it's not extended. This would allow to communicate with anything up to and including the moon, but it sort of sticks out like that. And I'll save that for geosynchronous satellites. Okay, now, can't really duplicate this exactly because of the way the attachment stuff works. Um, I 
And we don't need that one. Actually, technically we don't really need that one at all, because these are activated by default, but I, I just prefer to have it there. Okay, so let's see now. Now we can duplicate directly. And voila, we have a stack of four satellites. All very cute. Oh, uh, for some reason I didn't have symmetry going for me there. Hold on. Okay, so now we have this payload and we definitely don't want it to stage the way it's configured right now. It's very tall, you'll notice. And that's what I was worried about. Hmm. Now this is a pretty light payload, as you can see, only one ton. So what kind of rocket should I use with it? Should I just use the Dellinger? Seems like a very tall payload for it though. Oh, and this Dellinger still has the old... Ooh. Oh, we've got that problem again. But this isn't the right Dellinger launcher anyway. Ah, so here's the Dellinger 2, and what we need is to get it ready and get these sized properly. Let's see now. Okay, so let's uh, save this as a sub-assembly. Yeah. So this will be Dellinger... Safe. Okay, now let's load up the satellite pack. Alright, so Dillinger 2, please. And we'll just set it aside. We need to get some sort of fairing base. Why does it seem like I have more stages than I do? Oh, okay, it's it's all the satellites have gotten all bunched up. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. The fairings are there. We've got plenty of juice to get up to altitude quickly. In fact, let's modify this for SETI. We don't need this much juice in this stage. Not for SETI, sorry, Dellinger. Why does it only show, like... It pretends like these... Don't ha Oh, maybe they don't have juice? Uh, let's see. Let me make sure everything has... Well... Now they do. Don't really see more Delta V though. What's up with this? Oh, it's all backwards. <laughs> That's why. Okay. I think something tall like this deserves some struts. Let's just use the regular KSP struts. Okay, we've got all the fuel loaded up uh, in the top stages, so we can continue to fix this. Just need a six minute burn on this. That seems about right. Just want to verify that I've got everything set up. Okay, um... I'm not going to waste uh, potential electric charge with lights on these, unfortunately. So let's try this. Comsat Pack Dillinger 2. 
and maybe this will be good enough to replace our current TDRS satellite constellation. I don't know about naming them. I guess we'll we'll just call them NRS. Uh, yeah, new relay satellites, and then name them the same names that I did Bermuda, etc. I think that's fair. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take this out to the launch pad. Okay, seems good to me. I don't need it to be fully morning. Now, we've got an interesting thing. We are of course launching from Cape Canaveral. So we're gonna have an inclination to these guys. And that'll be alright, I think. I think. I'm gonna suspect that it's gonna be alright. Obviously, everything else so far, except for the most recent stuff, like GSTAT 2, was placed equatorially. Could conceivably launch from here, but I'll stick to this. Wait a second. Oh. The clouds and sea lights mod, the, the lights. Oh, that, I seem to have two different configurations, maybe? Yeah, see, here the lights fit uh, traditional Kerbin, I think. You can see the African-shaped continent there. But, if you zoom in like this, you can see the texture of the, the globe. So, a little bit of a glitch there. I'm going to have to ignore that. Let's just ignore that. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, not too many, uh, we really don't have much relay capability on this stage because of the liquid fuel and oxidizer, gotta keep that in mind. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're on our way. Now we do want to get into a roughly circular orbit, a pretty circular orbit, and uh, we want it to have a period of an hour and 30 minutes. And that way we'll uh, release a new satellite and boost a new satellite every every three orbits. No, every four orbits, sorry. Every four orbits, so every six hours. It looks like FAR doesn't have any problems with us, so... And considering how well shielded we are, I sure hope not. Okay, I think I'm gonna drop the fairings now rather than later. I'm gonna extend one of the, well let, let me extend one from the base module. Activate. The line of sight still looks good. Remember, I'm not entirely confident that our TRS satellites are really going to help in this case. 
So I do want to maintain communication through line of sight here. We're past apoapsis, but uh, we're just completing this burn. Again, I'm just looking for an orbital period of one and a half hours. Okay, one and a half hours as planned, uh, though not quite circular, but we'll take what we can get on that. Okay, um, the camera seems to be a bit weird. Hold on. There we go. Let's get that. Okay, let me let me get control. Okay. All right. So first, let's prepare our first satellite, and we're going to send it out now. Hopefully, we'll have enough time. Uh, with a connection, right? and everything being all good and happy. Okay, I think that's all good. Let's try this out. Uh-oh. Oh no, this is the decoupler. Uh -huh. uh, here we go. Not decoupler, uh, was whatever it's called. Okay, um, throttle down, make sure everything is good. Activate rockets. Just go flat out prograde. Okay, uh, three hours and a few seconds, but let's correct that with our RCS, which always gives me a shock whenever it starts up now because it makes that sound. Okay, uh, within one millisecond basically. All right. Okay, so our first one's away. Looks like I packed just enough fuel for it. It's got nice panels, electric charge is charging up clearly. It is in communication with stuff. Actually currently in communication with the other mission control, the European Space Agency Center. Uh, through State Putnik, not, oh it is through State Putnik. I'm always surprised when State Putnik is the one that's facilitating things. Okay, but otherwise this is its periapsis, so it, this isn't where it would be in command anyway. It's really when it reaches its apoapsis that it's really going to be in control. Uh, let's jump back to our other mission that shouldn't be too far away from us. Uh, there it is. Um, I think I have a glitch, obviously. Let me go back to the Space Center. Okay, did I say back to the Space Center? What I meant was restart the game because I wasn't able to... I was totally glitched out. Uh, let's cross our fingers and check on our the satellite that we released. We need to rename it anyway, I forgot to do that. So let's see. Okay, so far so good. This satellite seems to be... Uh, if you're wondering what I could possibly have thought would go wrong, I was worried that the stretchy tank would suddenly revert to default. Uh, I have had that problem before, and so it was a little bit of a worry. So let me rename Vessel. This will be uh, the new relay satellite system, and we'll just call it Bermuda as the first one. Okay, so this is all, all good, I guess. Uh, I guess we could... Uh, is... Is actually doing some sign. Oh, okay, in space high only. All right, that's fine. All right, so let's go back to. Let's do exactly what I did that made it glitched out, and let's hope that everything is all right. Okay, looking good. Uh, looks like we're safe. Even got the little 
separator ring floating out there. And yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we're good to continue with our mission. And like I said, I wanted to separate them by four orbits. So let's see. Uh, this com pack, a uh, comsat pack, orbit four times. Actually, I need to get some solar panels up on this thing. Otherwise, it's not really going to survive very well. Okay, I think this is the right time. But is it the right place? I suppose I should be above the KSC again. Yeah. So I have to uh, wait until I'm above the KSC. Or actually, it was more above the, the European Space Center. Because this one is... Okay, whatever. All right, I'm I'm getting too confused here. This is NRS Bermuda. So if NRS Bermuda is overhead, that's the right time. I think, sort of. Let me just set it as a target. Now, if I burn from uh, periapsis here, it won't be right. No, I, I let me wait a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. That's its apoapsis. So if I burn more from here-ish, it'll be right. So right above the, right above there. Okay. So let's get some solar panels out on the base one here. Alright, quite nice. And decouple. Okay, this looks like the right unit. Okay, and activate. Orient to prograde. Will it be staggered from the other one? I don't know. I haven't ever done this before, so I really don't know how this is going to work out. But let's get to a three hour orbit, and hopefully that'll be alright. I hope I've done this right. Okay, a little bit late there. RCS. And exactly right. Okay. So, um... Okay, that's the target. So we're sort of like that. Okay, looks like we're actually a little bit late this time, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like a little bit more than 90 degrees there. But uh, there's also the fact that, you know, the inclination might be messing with me here. But yeah, that, that looks interesting, very interesting. Can I get more communication lines? No. Remote Tech is still not very happy with me and this install. So, can't quite get all the, the line. And let's face it, it'll be a mess anyway. Alright, uh, shall I try and go back to the other? Yeah, it's already decided to get messy. Um, oh, I need to rename this. Uh oh. Don't do that. Okay. So. I forget the order of them. It should be Madrid next, right? Let's see, where are my TDRS satellites? Oh, I need to uh, replace Polestar as well. 
I think the order goes to Madrid, Oro Valley, and then Uragity. But I'm not sure. That's the order I'm going to go in this time. So, NRS Madrid. Okay, let's see if this works. And no, it doesn't. So I guess I have to quit out of the game, restart. This is getting very tedious, honestly. Okay, I'm gonna trust that TRS, uh, not TRS, NRS Madrid is fine. And I'm just gonna go back to the ComSat pack. I did have to quit and start over. This time, I won't switch directly from one to another. I'll go back to the Space Center beforehand. All right, but let's get this done. I mean, at least it's all right and not, uh, doesn't look like it's got any problems or glitches involved. I should probably clean up this stuff. I've got a lot of debris in orbit as well. And so uh, maybe that's a thing that I need to take care of, especially the TDRS satellites, which are no longer necessary. Okay, now. Yeah, what a mess. Okay, I really need the haystack plug-in, but what I really need to do right now, I guess, is just to go around a few times. You know, I must say, the system looks just fine as it is, but maybe I'm actually patching some connections here. We'll see. Anyway, uh, that's three. And I suppose this is four. So, we're going to burn out from here and hope that we've got a new orbit for it. Hmm, it's all in the dark. That's great. Let's extend panels on it. Decouple. Switch. Activate thrusters. Rotate to prograde. Make sure we're not bumping into anything. Uh, looks okay. And start this going. And another orbit that is just, uh, what is that, a hundredth of a second away from being three hours? And it looks like this. Uh, pretty much opposite of the other one. Good. Uh, opposite of Bermuda, I mean. Okay, pretty close, not bad. And I've already renamed it, so what we need to do is Space Center. Oh, that didn't work. It glitched out. Maybe I shouldn't go back to... Well, yeah, maybe I shouldn't go back to Space Center while I'm map view. Okay, anyway, I, I'm gonna have to uh, quit out and restart in order to continue this mission yet again. Alright, finally, last one. Let's get there. Okay, it's in the dark, but we can see that uh, everything is still intact, despite the glitches. Very important. And we once again have to wait for orbits before separating and boosting this one. So yeah, if anybody has any idea what's going on with this issue I'm having, please uh, be sure to drop a little note. Four. Okay. So here we go. Still in the dark. But everything is out. And in fact I can just stage normally this time. So if it'll let me. Let me just boost myself away a little bit. 
to keep my periapsis under control, I do have to add a little bit of a pitch to this. Shouldn't hurt the fuel situation. We're cutting it pretty close here. Wow. So it really did hurt the fuel situation to do what I did there. Okay, well. Mm, looks like this one is not going to be very perfect. Ah, uh, well. Okay. So noted. But it is in a roughly three hour orbit. Slightly off. Now, all of the four that I launched are now coplanar. They all have this orbit here, as you can see, which may or may not be a good thing. It's a little bit complicated because we've got all this other stuff going on too, and I have to debate whether to deorbit all of them. Uh, if you would like to comment about whether I should or not, I would, uh, I would enthusiastically greet such commentary. So uh, perhaps you guys can help me decide whether I should deorbit the other satellites I already have in orbit. Um, the next thing I want to do though, I won't do that just yet, the next thing I actually want to do is send a geostationary satellite that can communicate with interplanetary missions. Something with the longest range antenna that we can get. And uh, put that into orbit. And then, in the same episode hopefully, uh, put into orbit something that can reach either uh, Venus slash Eve or Mars slash Duna. Now I don't know, I say put into orbit because I don't know if we can transfer to either one at this point. I don't think they're quite in the right location. Uh, yeah, I, I, it doesn't seem like either one would be in the right location. But we can uh, send it into orbit in preparation for a mission to one or the other and get that going. There's no problem putting it into orbit. We will be able to test systems before boosting it to its uh, flyby trajectory. And it will be a flyby. I don't think I'm going to plan on getting anything into orbit around Eve or I mean, uh, Mars or Venus. We'll see. I'll have to take a look at the Delta V requirements for that. Alright, so this has been a, sort of a maintenance episode and it looks like I have some serious maintenance issues indeed. Remember if you have any idea about the glitch I was having please uh, mention that in the comments below as well. Alright, anyway thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please do press like and I'll see you next time.